Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Model Aviation Political Update. Second Annual Multi-GP International Open held in Muncie, Indiana. And crowdfunding campaign launched for development of drone parachute system. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The aeropolitical scene remains active and a bit frustrating but AMA remains an active participant in important model aviation issues. AMA tells us that the AMA Government Affairs Team has been working persistently with lawmakers this year to ensure our hobby is protected in FAA reauthorization legislation. The Senate's August recess gave our team a few days to adjust our strategy towards preserving Section 336 and to address some state and local concerns. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell canceled all but a week of the annual August recess to deal with the legislative backlog as they work to pass as many bills as possible ahead of the September 30th fiscal year deadline. Now that Senators have returned to Washington, AMA will be back on Capitol Hill to meet with legislators and stakeholders to advocate for the model aviation hobby and protect Section 336. If the Senate runs out of time to address FAA legislation, Congress will defer any substantive decision-making on FAA reauthorization until next year by passing a continuing resolution. This would maintain the status quo for a little longer. However, AMA maintains that a longer-term reauthorization of the FAA is needed to strengthen the special role for model aircraft and affirm the role of the community-based organizations like AMA in educating hobbyists. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The governor of Illinois has signed a law that gives the state the sole authority to regulate drones in the state stripping local governments of any ability to write its own laws. Senate Bill 3291, which was signed by Governor Bruce Rauner last week, states the regulation of an unmanned aircraft system is an exclusive power and function of the state. No unit of local government, including Home Rule Unit, may enact an ordinance or resolution to regulate unmanned aircraft systems. Unless you're in Chicago. The state's largest city is somehow exempt from the new law. The San Diego Fire Department has launched a pilot program to use drones to assist in firefighting efforts. The aircraft will be equipped with cameras to give aerial views of fire scenes, use thermal imagers to help identify people or hot spots, and help firefighters on the ground plan the best course of action for fighting a fire. The aircraft will be launched by firefighters on the ground, but once airborne, they will be controlled using a telepresence platform. The final agenda of the 12th Annual UAS Summit and Expo, the Upper Midwest's premier unmanned aircraft systems event, has been released, taking place August 20th through 22nd in Grand Forks, North Dakota. The 2018 agenda includes a keynote presentation from Secretary of the U.S. Air Force Heather Wilson and presentations from North Dakota Senators John Hoven and Heidi Heindkamp and Representative Kevin Kramer. At the request of its federal security partners, the FAA is using its existing authority to address concerns about drone operations over national security sensitive facilities by establishing temporary flight restrictions specific to UAS. In cooperation with the DOD, the FAA is establishing additional restrictions on drone flights up to 400 feet within the lateral boundaries of the following federal facilities, NGA West, NGA Next West, and NGA Arnold, all near St. Louis, Missouri. 
That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The largest professional drone racing league in the world hosted the biggest drone sport gathering in the history last week. The second annual Multi-GP International Open took place August 8th through 12th at the Academy of Model Aeronautics headquarters in Muncie, Indiana. The week-long event attracted the best pilots from all over the world, including the U.S., Canada, Latin and South America, Europe, Korea, China, New Zealand, and Australia. Gerald Racing is the newest brother of esports. It is a sport of the future, said Chris Thomas, CEO and founder of the Multi-GP Drone Racing League. Drone sports is very popular among the youth. Our league currently holds over 23,000 registered drone pilots and around 1,200 active chapters around the globe. And our fastest pilots are often under 20. The 2018 Multi-GP International Open showcased eight different tracks for all skill levels, with all running at the same time, and with as many as 64 pilots in the year at once. With a major increase in popularity from last year's event, the world's fastest pilots competed on two different World Cup tracks to face international competition. Other featured tracks were the popular Rookie Track, Fixed Wing, Drone Battle, Team Racing, Freestyle Quads, and the Night Flying Lit LED Course. A crowdfunding campaign has been launched for the development of a drone parachute system that its designer hopes will lead to approval of flights over people. Indemnis has already exceeded its stated fundraising goal and is developing complete solution for businesses to fly commercial-sized drones over populated areas, according to the site. Indemnis provides both the hardware and the services that enable the integration of small UAS into the national airspace for the purpose of safely performing commercial operations over urban environments. The system has been developed in response to public concerns over injury, adding the necessary measure of just-in-case safety. The system does not rely on the aircraft in a failure scenario. Auto deployment software detects a fall within 6 to 10 feet of vertical descent and also includes a manual trigger by pilot option. The parachute deploys in under 30 milliseconds at 90 miles per hour, escaping the roll radius to prevent entanglement so the chute will open successfully. The deployment tube made from the ultra-high strength Dyneema composite fabric material remains rigid, removing the attachment point of the parachute lines away from the control surfaces of the drone. After deployment, the stabilized vertical descent rate is slowed down to 6.8 miles per hour. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.